Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing a warm Everose Red Gold and 904L Stainless Steel Rolex Oyster Perpetual Date Just 41, reference 12633. One, it is a gorgeous timepiece that is the successor to the Datejust 2, but more elegant in its proportions and critically, whereas the Datejust 2 was not available with the historic Jubilee bracelet, the Datejust 41 absolutely is reuniting the two names first joined in 1945 when the Datejust and the Jubilee bracelet bowed for the 40th anniversary, or Jubilee, of the Rolex company. So on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see the watch is still 41 millimeters like the Datejust 2, but it is a handsome and slender presence across the wrist thanks to the Super Jubilee bracelet. Only 47.4 millimeters across the wrist, whereas quite a bit narrower than the solid end link oyster clad Datejust 2. The watch is also reasonably slim. 11.7 millimeters, you can see the slope of the case plank means this one will slide easily underneath any dress cuff. And the watch has a modern stance on the wrist, a spacing of 21 millimeters between the lugs. And what fits between the lugs is gorgeous. I mentioned that this is the Super Jubilee, and the Super Jubilee has now been with us for about a decade and a half. First bowing on the 2005 Datejust is so named because you can see the center links of the Super Jubilee are themselves solid. Of course, the removable links still fixed by screws. Now it's a plausible sports bracelet because with all solid links, you don't need the burly or oyster to keep everything with structural integrity and substance on the wrist. It really feels as though you could wear this quite aggressively and benefit from the superior venting of the Jubilee compared to the Oyster. Now the individual links are handsome, staggered alignment, differential size, and high polished centers with high polished outer facing. The small links make for a very supple feel on the wrist. And of course, this is a premier Rolex clasp. You always know whether you're looking at a flagship or an entry level clasp based on whether it is of high polish inside. You can see there's a lift lock system with a beacon to hook. All of high polish inside. Another feature that distinguishes the entry level clasps from the more deluxe ones, the presence of the 5mm Easy Link system, a tool free adjustment that allows you to move the bracelet in or out five millimeters without removing any links. Now you can see there are also three divots drilled inside the clasp that allow you to fine tune the sizing by changing the anchoring point of the bracelet. Straight through high polished red gold, you can see that with satin finished flanks and polished faces. The case itself is graceful and you can see the twin dots of the rose gold twin lock crown. The watch 100 meters water resistant with an elegant case band. The Datejust 41 has not succumbed to the super case and thanks, thank goodness for that. You you can see it's a bit more tapered, a bit more rounded, not squared off in sheer. The bezel is a wonderful thing because whenever you look at an unpolished Rolex bezel, the quality of the fluting, the crispness of the creases, and the gem-like reflective quality, they dazzle in any light. Now the dial of this watch featuring a sort of brown bronze sunburst, it is very warm with a gilt rose gold style printing and matching rose gold hands and rose gold applique 18 karat indices, rose gold Rolex coronet. It's a handsome and visually consonant look. It's also nicely loomed, so automatic winding 100 meters water resistant and fully loomed. This is a viable watch that could be your only watch with considerable sports watch credentials. Cyclops Eye Magnifier, which I find wears better on the 41 millimeter case and dial than it does on the smaller watches. Here it doesn't crowd or intrude, it's simply practical and functional. You can see the reaction of the sunburst grain of the dial from the center out and underneath that dial. Rolex Caliber 3235, 31 joules, automatic winding, 70 hour power reserve, upgraded with a slimmer mainspring barrel wall, a thicker mainspring, or at least a larger mainspring, to provide more power, and the new Rolex Chronergy Escapement, which is effectively Rolex's answer to Omega's coaxial. All of this providing more power and using less power in turn to increase the power reserve from the Datejust 2's 48 hours to the Datejust 41's 70. 28 8 beat rate, hacking seconds, quick set date. It features a full balance bridge and a free sprung index for shock resistance, an overcoil hairspring to help it earn its COSC chronometer certificate with concentric beating in any orientation with respect to gravity, and the overcoil, which is handmade, is constructed of an oxidized niobium zirconium alloy known as parachrome blue in Rolex speak that makes it highly anti magnetic. 
The timepiece, thoroughly refined, is actually tested as a fully assembled watch after the chronometer certified movement is received by Rolex to assure that the fully assembled watch runs no worse than minus two plus two seconds per day. That is Rolex's superlative chronometer standard and the substantive basis for the script superlative chronometer officially certified at the base of the dial. You can see and purchase this Rolex 126331. Make it yours on the watch box. Rolex Datejust 41, Rolex Chromalite Blue.